welcome to the Pianist TV channel. In this following masterclass, Graham Fitch discusses non-legato touches such as tenuto, portato, leggero, and much more. The filming takes place at Steinway Hall, right in the heart of London. Before Graham begins his lesson, here's a quick glance around the Steinway showroom and its vast piano workshop. Graham demonstrates on a Model D concert ground. Hello, I'm Graham Fitch and I'm bringing you this video demonstration on non-legato touches from Steinway Hall in London and it complements my article in issue 69 of Pianist magazine. I'm going to be talking about six different types of non-legato touch but before I do so I'd just like to spend a couple of minutes describing what I mean by non-legato. We've already talked about legato as being connected. This is legato. And staccato as being disconnected or separated. I'd like to first of all talk about a touch which is staccato but the pedal is down. And this illustrates a very important fact about the piano that whether the foot is up or down, whether the pedal's on or off, the ear still perceives the touch as the important thing. Let me demonstrate that now. I'm going to play staccato with the pedal down. Now I'm going to play legato with the pedal down. I think we can very clearly hear that the first one is staccato, even though the sounds continue. It's a little bit like if I'm in a cathedral and I'm playing staccato. The resonance of the building will cause the sounds to linger and to hang around, but it'll still be staccato. So this is very important. Um, when we see, very often we see in piano music staccato dots, and we can tell that the pedal has to be down, as in this example from Debussy's first prelude, Danseuse de Delphes, where we have a low F in the bass, which has to be sustained for two bars. There's a melody line above that. And yet in the middle of it, I need both hands to play the filling chords, which are marked staccato. We will hear them as staccato if I do this correctly. I did slightly exaggerate that just for the purposes of demonstration, but I'm playing the inside chords staccato as Debussy has marked them. The second type of non-legato touch that I'd like to talk about is called tenuto. Now, this is a type of an accentuation, but it's non-percussive. I do it by timing, or I do it by slightly uh, lingering on a note. I could linger before it, I could linger on it, I could add a little bit more weight to the sound. If you imagine um, something that's in slightly larger font and maybe in bold. I'm going to use an example, again, one that we have in the magazine of the Berceuse by Ilinsky. Very beautiful little piece. The minims, the last long note in each right hand bar, is marked with a tenuto line over the note. Now, let me de demonstrate that. What it'll need is a little bit of extra weight and a little bit of extra time. Which makes it very expressive, very melodic. It's a type of non-legato touch, in a way, but the a clearer one probably would be portato. Now, if I can just briefly describe portato. Pianists sometimes get this confused and call it portamento. 
but it's only pianists that would get this confused because a, a singer would know exactly what that portamento was. It's sliding from one note to the next. I'm not going to demonstrate this. A violinist, when they swoop from one note to the next, that's portamento. Now, portato, we can think about it as a kind of sticky staccato. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this using an excerpt, actually one bar excerpt, from Liszt's famous Liebestraum, where he's marked the notes with staccato dots, and yet they're covered by a slur. Now, here's what it sounds like. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to literally separate the sounds. I'm going to play legato, but I'm going to use separate bowings, if you can describe it like that, separate motion of my arm. Here it is. And those arm strokes add drag to the playing. It's slightly fattening the sounds, slightly, um, they take a little longer to, to manage, to, to play. I'm going to give another example from the Chopin C-sharp minor polonaise. At the end of this phrase, you'll see what I'm doing. There's a few notes marked portato. When I say marked portato, there's the staccato dots, and then there's the slur over the top of it. So I play them a little bit dragging um, for that portato effect. I'm going to move on next to a leggero touch, which literally means lightly. Now, very often we don't see any marking in the score to, to show us that we must do this. We have to know, and this is true of a lot of these touches. Sometimes they're marked, other times we can use them. We just have to know where's an appropriate place to use them. Now, I'd like to demonstrate Leggero from an extract of Chopin, the third scherzo, the beginning of the second section. He writes chords and then a cascade of notes which are marked Leggerissimo. I'll show you first. demonstrate how I do that. The Leggero approach is to have the wrist slightly higher than my usual position, which would be roughly parallel to the floor. I have it slightly higher and the fingers ever so slightly flatter or straighter. And I'm using a tickling or a, a scratching movement, which gives me a very pearly, very transparent, glittery type of sound. So that's a leggero. I'm going to end by talking about a loud leggero that isn't really such a thing as a loud leggero, but it's the same type of touch. And I call it an allegro brioso, or a toccata-like touch. Now let me demonstrate it first using the beginning of the C minor prelude from book one by Bach. I'm going to do it first of all legato to show you that this is really not an appropriate touch to use for this example. This is legato. do it again staccato and you'll hear that this isn't right either. That's much too clattery and pedantic. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my brioso touch and I think you'll hear that this is the best type of sound for this piece. not really staccato in that there aren't any discernible gaps between the sounds, neither is it legato. It's halfway in between. Now, if you want to get a sense of how this feels, I'm going to do something a little unusual now. I'm going to close the piano, <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to get the, the sound on the top of the, of the lid. Of course, you could use a table. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm aiming to make as percussive and explosive an attack as possible. You'll hear it. but I'm very loose in my arm. And I get the feeling that one stroke leads into the next one. Uh, it's a very uh, uh, comfortable type of sound. Let me show you again on the keyboard.
and it goes on. What will come out of this demonstration is that there are lots of different types of touch which are called non legato, which we can draw on when the composer instructs us to do so by signs and symbols and by words. But when we don't see the signs and the symbols and the words, we're still, it's still perfectly okay to use these different touches. And I think if we think about these touches as being a little bit like the painter, the painter's brush, the painter has a whole load of different brushes in his paint box, and he uses them all in their own individual ways. So it's a little bit different from colors, it's how to apply the colors. And I look forward to seeing you again where I'll talk about articulation and slurs.